Welcome to the channel Learn with Danish. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. Hello everybody. Today we are going to discuss John Milton and uh, before we get into the poem that is prescribed for the University of Calicut BA English Language and Literature second sem paper appreciating poetry we need to understand uh, the situation wherein John Milton live or the contemporary features of uh, the times of John Milton's life where he has written his poetry so John Milton was an English writer and he had lived during the puritan age that is uh, the age just after the age of shakespeare we see that in the age of shakespeare queen elizabeth was uh, the ruler of the british empire It was during that time that the British Raj expanded throughout the world. Why did that happen? It happened uh, because uh, they were the ones who defeated the then naval force. Uh, the best naval force then was the Spanish naval force. And it is after the Spanish Armada that this is uh, building up colonies worldwide happened for the British because it was considered to be one of the major victories of Queen Elizabeth. You can see the portrait of Queen Elizabeth. and uh, behind that portrait you have the picture of the spanish armada that is why she actually considers that particular event in her life to be the most important event so during the time of shakespeare we had economic prosperity we had all sorts of prosperity that british could attain and uh, due to this prosperity the literature of that age also flourished to a great extent and hence shakespeare who has written for the common people also flourished tremendously taking a grand place in english literature so after shakespeare we have one of the major writers is john milton so what happened after queen elizabeth's rule in england after queen elizabeth's rule james 1 succeeded and james 1 ruled for the empire for around uh, 20 years and after that his son charles 1 assumed throne and it is during this time that is 1623 onwards uh, to be precise in the late 1620s we see that charles 1 happens to have a very kind of uh, rebellious relationship between with with the church of england as well as the people of england he levied many taxes and he tried to bring in the system of the divine rule system wherein he considers the king to be the supreme head of all decisions in england so this actually uh, made the parliamentary people the parliament to revolt or to a kind of uh, rebel against uh, the then monarch charles 1 and ultimately it led to the english civil war that uh, lasted for almost 10 years and uh, it was in the year 1649 that uh, charles 1 was executed and uh, the first british commonwealth came into existence and uh, the the basic principle related to commonwealth is that uh, british population slowly started uh, gaining its popularity in uh, protestantism belief earlier it was uh, the belief system was catholics slowly protestantism with the leadership of uh, leaders like oliver cromwell it slowly uh, inculcated into the british society they started questioning the church so they they were the ones who actually uh, revolted against the orthodoxy of christianity and uh, we see that uh, it it came it it made a kind of a, a revolution it came in it made a kind of renaissance in the british society during that time so it was uh, during uh, the age of uh, oliver cromwell oliver cromwell was the head of the commonwealth and uh, it is only by 1650s or 1660 to be precise that uh, the british monarchy system again was restored in britain so from 1649 to 1660 english or the british empire did not have any monarch the only period where british empire did not 
have uh, kings or queens or princes in document was uh, during the period of commonwealth that is from uh, 1649 to 1660 almost for 11 years and uh, oliver cromwell after his age we see that his son also had kind of rebellious nature and slowly the commonwealth was overthrown by the son of charles 1 who actually fled to france uh, during the civil war charles 2 resumed the throne in the year 1660 so 1660 is also considered to be the start of the restoration period restoration in the sense uh, the restoration of the monarchy of england so it is during uh, the times uh, milton uh, played its part it was during this time that uh, all the uh, theaters were shut down there were no entertainment as such and uh, people started believing in moral philosophy rather than secular philosophy people lost faith in uh, the secular system the royal family and uh, people started thinking in a very kind of a moral manner so god was considered to be the prime subject of various literatures that emerged during the puritan age so we had a very uh, brief discussion on uh, the contemporary time that uh, milton had lived during age of uh, king james 1 then king charles 1 then you have the uh, commonwealth period then after that uh, you had uh, the restoration period where he focused on writing his paradise lost that is the biggest epic poem in english literature so let's just look into the life of milton milton was born into a puritan family and he had an anti royalist approach throughout his life he had supported the execution of charles 1 in his uh, work which is quite titled as the tenure of kings and magistrates and uh, he has uh, published his work major work that is paradise lost in the year 1667 which gained him fame after shakespeare certain critics um, comment that after shakespeare the greatest english uh, writer is uh, john milton he has also written various poetic genres he has written an elegy on the death of his friend edward king and it is called lycidas and uh, his he has uh, uh, written a plea for the freedom of press which is called aeropagitica 1644 and uh, his sonnets uh, are basically written in uh, the elizabethan pattern or the shakespearean pattern as such as you know sonnet is a genre of poetry which emerged uh, from italy with petrarch and then we have uh, shakespeare who used it in a vivid sense uh, writing around 154 sonnets in his lifetime and uh, his sonnets also focused on the political times of his age for example on the lord general cromwell may 1652 is a sonnet that focused or that praised uh, the accession of uh, lord cromwell into the commonwealth then Uh, we see that uh, he also has written fiercely against the uh, restoration period and this intention is clearly or uh, vividly seen in his work uh, the ready and easy way to establish a commonwealth so on the whole uh, milton was considered to be a writer who focused on different subject matters in different intervals of his time he has been imprisoned uh, several times due to his anti royalist approach and it is due to his friends like andrew marvel and all those people who actually uh, did a kind of favor for him for uh, the release of his imprisonment It was in the year 1651 that uh, we see that uh, Milton loses his eyesight in a gradual manner. By 1652 he becomes completely blind and it is in the year 1652 uh, the poem that you have got to learn that is on his blindness is written. In this poem he talks about the metaphor of light uh, that he had uh, when he was pretty young. it was in his 40s basically that he turns out to be blind completely and after he turns out to be blind it was his friend andrew marvel who actually assisted him in writing his poetry after he becomes blind only he 
actually publishes his work paradise lost then he has written paradise regained samson agonistus all these works all these major works were written during the time of his uh, uh, vision impairment and uh, we see that uh, in this sonnet also uh, he talks about his uh, experience of uh, uh, becoming a blind poet or becoming a poet who is not able to see things and who is not able to convey things in the proper manner as uh, a sighted person can so now let's uh, just get into the poem uh, when i consider how my light is spent written by john milton when i consider how my light is spent yeah half my days in this dark world and wide and that one talent which is dead to hide lost with me useless though my soul more bent to serve there with my maker and present my true account lest he returning shied doth god exact day labor light denied i fondly ask but patience to prevent that murmur soon replies god doth not need either man's work or his own gifts who best bear his mild yoke they serve him best his state is kingly thousands at his bidding speed and post all land and ocean without rest they also serve who only stand and wait now let's just go into the poem in detail that's a sonnet 14 line poem uh, the elizabethan sonnet pattern that uh, milton uses here so the first two line when i consider how my light is spent here half my days in this dark world and wide now the present condition of milton is that he is visually impaired that is he is completely blind he cannot see things everything is dark around him and he is just thinking of the days where he had not lost his eyesight that is uh, the period before he becomes blind so he is thinking about that period he is thinking about the period when he had eyesight and now it's the halfway stage and i'm going to spend my rest of my life in this dark world so we see that uh, there is a play between light and dark he associate light with his earlier stage and dark with the present blind condition and that one talent which is dead to hide talent the word talent is written in capital letter t and it has got a kind of uh, significance or a kind of biblical allusion into it here uh there is a reference to matthew verses 13 to 30 and the use of talent is uh, related to the story of a master who gives certain number of talents talents in the sense um, a kind of money to his servants three servants and leaves and uh, on his return uh, we see that uh, two of his servants actually uh, put that money into several use and doubled it when he returns right and there is the third servant who actually buries the money inside and uh, the master when he returns calls the third servant and uh, casts him out of the house so it this uh, particular story from uh, the new testament in matthew uh is significant of the fact that milton had got that talent here talent for milton can be also assumed to the talent or the skill that he has or the ability or the quality that he has in order to write poetry so and that one talent which is dead to hide it is only through death that i can hide my talent right i can hide my talent so i have did i bury my talent when i was having my eyesight that's a question he's asking did i bury like the third servant the talent that i had when i had eyesight and now it is only dead to hide lost with me useless though my soul more bent did i not make use of my talent in the most perfect manner that i ought to be to serve there with my maker and present my true account 
lest he returning shied it is through that uh, poetry writing that i actually serve with my almighty my maker and present my true account i could have presented my true identity as a writer lest but he returning shied but uh, i think he would be really angry the god would be really angry with me just like the master was angry with his third servant because i haven't used my talent in the most effective manner now milton is asking to himself does god exact day labor like denied does uh, god need work from the side of his uh, creation in order to reject paradise or in order to reject reward i fondly ask but patience to prevent but there's one thing that can prevent from me asking that's patience that murmur soon replies god doth not need either man's work or his own gifts who best bear his mild yoke they serve him best his state is kingly thousands at his bidding speed and post o'er land and ocean without rest they also serve who only stand and wait so it is a patience that is there inside milton who actually murmurs to himself that god does not need either man's work or his own gifts god is not a person or a thing that needs uh, the gifts of its creation or the work of its creation so who best bear his mild yoke people the person or the individual who can look after himself who can take care of his own responsibility who could bear his mild yoke they serve him best they are the people who actually serve god the best so one individual if he or she can look after himself in a very proper manner or in a in a manner that god has wished for then that is the best service that you can do to god that serve him the best his state is kingly so he's talking he's talking about god right god is not compared to any human to a human being god's state is kingly he is above everything he is the mighty emperor thousands at his bidding speed there are billions of creatures not just human beings alone there are billions and trillions of species or creatures that are under him and you're just a small kind of lice or parasite right you're just of that state and post over land and ocean without rest not just land but also in the ocean earth is a place where it's filled with uh, 70% ocean so even in land and ocean without rest there are creatures who are actually uh, praising god thinking about god's creation right so his state is absolutely kingly divine they also serve who only stand and wait so it you just wait you just need to wait for the opportunity to come in your life if you have the opportunity to write if you have the opportunity to express your feelings that is what milton is really gratified upon he says that at the end he has a certain hope that he would continue his writing he would continue writing his poetry and uh, that continuity or that a will power that he has in his mind would serve god the best they also serve who only stand and wait if you have any kind of physical difficulty in writing please do make an alternative arrangement if you can do that that is the best way that you can serve god and he does like that so even when he is blind he doesn't stop writing poetry he takes the assistance of his friend like andrew marvel in order to write his poems so that is the poem in general and i hope that uh, you have understood the poem if you have any doubts uh, related to the poem you can just post in the comment box below till then it's me danish signing off Have a good day learn with danish